Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 265. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today. Here's why. Uh, Simply put, oftentimes, as we're going out there to build our business, one of the things that gets in the way is we're like, man, I'm having trouble building my team, figuring out who's going to help me with this thing. Or or more importantly, we just lack certain skill sets. And occasionally, (laughs) we delude ourselves into thinking, I know, I'm going to go learn how to do this particular skill set ourselves instead of actually finding the person to do it for us, which is probably the better way to go. And today's guest is going to be able to help you clarify that in a completely new and unique way, because there are some services, like don't get me wrong, uh, I I love all the, the technology, I love the fact that we can reach across the world in just a matter of seconds, but there are times where there are certain services that I'd like to keep close to home. Uh, for example, um, obviously, you know, we, we have a CFO, we have an accounting, uh, you know, arm of the company. And that's just something I, I don't feel very comfortable having too far away from me. And I want to make sure that that's close by. There are many, many services like that where you just don't feel comfortable sending it too far away. And today's guest has a solution for that. And more importantly, he builds his cash flow because he seems to be a restless entrepreneur. And I will explain what I mean by that. Today's guest is none other than Ian Bolina. He's the CEO of Peer Hustle. Peer Hustle is a mobile on demand freelancer marketplace for the sharing economy. Now, here's the thing if you have ever said to yourself, Jay, I would totally do my business if I just had time. I want you to understand that Ian, he has a production company, a video production company. He does short-term real estate rentals. And just in case you thought that wasn't enough, he also is still making it work while working for IBM. Now, what does that mean to you? That means you have no excuse. It's not about time. It's about focused. And clearly, Ian knows how to do exactly that. What I want you to do, though, is I want you to pay attention. I want you to listen how Peer Hustle has the ability to possibly help you build your business and set you free. Help me welcome Ian Bellina. Ian, are you there? Yes, I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad that you are here. I'm surprised you had the time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well as you mentioned you can always make time if you make focus yeah i true true but you know this is something that i, I find remarkable it's like wow you just i mean do you, you do sleep right um sometimes sometimes <laughs> i sleep <laughs> <laughs> that's become optional totally under yeah, yeah. totally understood now I'm before and not, oh, okay, got it. You work entrepreneurs' hours as well as daytime yes. hours. I like it. I like it. So before I get too far down this road, I like to ask everybody the same question when we first get started. Uh, that simply being, uh, I look at today's entrepreneurs, of course, of which you are one, a lot like yesterday's superheroes. So when I, you know, you think of Batman and Robin and Black Widow and Hawk Man and Hawk Girl and all these people uh, who have these special abilities, I think entrepreneurs have a lot in common with superheroes namely you know occasionally we get dressed up sometimes we uh you know put on masks and capes or but most importantly we use our special skills to help improve the quality of life of other individuals entrepreneurs also are similar because they had a beginning before 
you know, Spider-Man was Spider-Man. You know, he was just kind of a photographer. <laughs> Before, you know, Superman was Superman. He was just a kid living at home with his mom and dad. And, you know, stuff happened. Uh, all of these things uh, occurred. And then the person became super as a result of how and what happened before. So what I'd love to know is before the video production, before the short-term real estate, before all of this stuff that you are currently doing, before even the mobile app was conceived, I want to know who is Ian Bellina. Wow. All right. So I have to take you guys way back all the way to middle school. So okay. As a kid growing up, I loved playing video games. I come from an African family. We're very strict and conservative. My mom was a professor. My dad was a professor. They stressed education. So during school time, I was busy grinding at schoolwork. But during the summertime, my parents would force me to go to the library as a kid to borrow books all the time to read. <laughs> so it got to a point where I wanted to make it very entertaining for me, very fun. So I began borrowing uh, computer magazines, technology magazines. From there, I, I, I told myself, how, how exactly are games made? So hmm. as a kid in middle school, when I was 12 years old, I began borrowing books on how to program. So I ended up getting books on how to build websites, began making my own websites by the age of 12. I fell in love with technology, began tinkering with DOS and computers and doing programming, making my own games. And from there, I read so many books about other entrepreneurs. And I told myself at a very young age that I wanted to be up there on their stage when it once I was growing up. So I read books on Bill Gates, on Jeff Bezos, how they're able to turn their ideas into reality. And that's when it gave me the vision, the idea. And from there on forth, I just chased that idea with dedication, telling myself one day I want to be a technology entrepreneur. I want to have my own company, my own business that maybe one day is known all over the world. Nice, nice. Now, I just want to make sure that I heard you correctly. Did you say DOS? Yes, right, yeah. That's awesome. Now, uh, most people probably have no clue what that is, and we just connected on something completely different, but th let's just call it pre-internet technology. <laughs> A long, long time ago, uh, that that was the computer language of choice. This, so that's awesome. Okay, um, what I would love to know then, how do you go from that to where we are today? I mean, how do you go from that to Peer Hustle? Where did that come from? So, right. So at a very young age, I learned how to be a self-learner. I learned many new skill sets as a kid. I knew every time I wanted to do something well, I would teach it myself. So as a kid, I learned to program myself. I learned to make websites myself. I began making web websites for my uncle and my family and friends. So that's, that was actually my first business was making websites for people. <laughs> it spread via word of mouth. We'd go to family functions. My parents would say, hey, my kid knows how to make websites. So my first ever website was my uncle's website for his school because yeah. he had a small preschool, a Montessori school, and he wanted somebody to do his network, his, his uh, website. From there, I began doing the IT work because I was very technical. And next thing you know, I had a web design business helping other people make websites. And that's when I kind of had the idea that, hey, I can totally start doing the side hustles. Then all the way to college, I didn't. Really, I just kept on doing websites. Then ended up doing my first ever startup in college, and that that came out more from a bet and a challenge with a, with a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> because one day we we're just there in the computer labs, and I, I majored in computer engineering, so it was after class. I was talking. I was talking. A, a, talking a lot about business, saying it's so easy to make a business. You just do X, Y, and Z. Could, go all the way to IPO and that's it. Then my friend of mine was like, okay, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and actually let's do a business together. So I was like, okay, that's a good <laughs> idea. So from there on forth, uh, for the next two years, we ended up doing a business. It was called Leximo. And it was a multilingual social dictionary. And the whole premise was, uh, as a kid, I was very into international cultures and different languages. And my friend was a Washington, Washington D.C. spelling bee champion. So he was very into linguistics. So huh. we put our two hobbies together to make a multilingual dictionary. So it was it was basically an urban dictionary, but with real words and visuals. So we had pictures, videos, and people would go there and vote uh, words up in, a, in the same manner as Dick. That way, it was the entire community or the entire world finding the best definition in a visual form. So that was the first idea. 
So that taught me a lot in terms of being an entrepreneur, being a hustler, going out there, trying to pitch my idea to investors, show them the value, uh, try to get users, marketing, PR, the entire process from A to Z. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And I really like the fact that it started in a computer lab, a place that I have spent way too much time. Uh, so <laughs> totally understood. Now, where do you think this concept, uh, there's something that you said that I want to bring out for everybody to to hear. You, you, This concept of being a self-learner uh, comes from, because a, a lot of individuals uh, that I've talked to in the past have said things to me like, well, I've already been to college, haven't I done enough? And yeah, and clearly you you've been surrounded by education. Two per, two parents that have professors. They're telling you to go to the library, and all of these things. But yet you still felt the need to learn additional things on your own. And I'm curious to know where that comes from. Um, initially, it just came from being bored and having trying to find things to do. But then it also just came from me being very ambitious and trying to figure out how to do things. So it's in a way it's a hacker mentality. So just being able to do things yourself, being very hands on. And growing up I didn't really have much to do. I mean in terms of I mean my parents, although they were professors when we moved from Africa over here, we weren't really that well well off. So as a kid I prior to getting the video games, I didn't really have much to do during the summertime. So I had to find different ways to do different things and you know, as opposed to getting into trouble. So I found different ways of keeping myself busy. And in a way, I feel like it's just the way I was wired. I feel like I was mm-hmm. born that way. I just, mm-hmm. ever, since I was, ever since I was a kid in fourth grade, I knew I was different from other kids and that I saw things very differently. You know, so because as a kid, I would get in trouble for just figuring out, out ways to hack the system, so to speak. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I came to a point where my teachers in school would reinvent the system because I figured out a way to hack it. Right. <laughs> so just having that mindset as a kid, I knew right away that I was business savvy, so to speak. Got it. I like it. I like it. Okay. And all right. So let, let's pick this up. We're, we're at Lexamo. And you, you're doing that with a friend for a couple of years. What happens next? Right. So after Luxembourg, we things kind of fizzled out. My friend had to go to, to med school. I ended up going to graduate school. The idea wasn't really taking off. When we, when we were talking to investors, they were saying the idea they didn't really think it was feasible to be done by a bunch of college a bunch of college kids. So things kind of petered off. And but I still learned a lot from that. It actually helped me parlay that experience into my job with IBM because I just loved the, the things I was doing outside of my curriculum at school. Mm-hmm. And so that I was doing websites, I was building apps and going out there and doing all these different things. And that's actually the same role I ended up working at IBM. So right now I'm an I'm a evangelist. I'm a technical evangelist. So I go out there and, and basically do the same thing, but with IBM products, not my products. Right. So just being out there, being client-facing, and next thing you know, fast forward till after graduate school, and I'm working, working in the corporate world, but I knew the entire time that I was an entrepreneur, and I loved the whole startup culture. And it was kind of funny, me being with a Fortune 20 company, you know, when I, when I was very entrepreneurial at the same time. Right. So one day, I'm sitting at home watching Silicon Valley, the TV show on HBO, and it just rekindled that fire in me of, of being an entrepreneur, going out there and doing my own startup. But I wanted to take all the lessons I learned from Luxima in the sense we were, we were a solution trying to find a problem. And so I see. That, that thing, that's why we had lots of challenges. So this time I sat down and told myself, okay, I'm going to try to solve a problem that I personally have. So I sat down, made a list of all the problems I had during the daytime, all the problems I had on a weekly basis, and basically ranked them to find the problem that I felt was the biggest need. And me being an entrepreneur, having my other companies, so at that time, I had gotten into into video production. And that's actually kind of funny, just to kind of segue real quick. So that was also a self-taught skill. So <laughs> as I traveled a lot... Of course, really- in your spare time, <laughs> just teach right, another yeah. skill. <laughs> okay. Right, so I traveled a lot, whether it was for work or personal travel. And everywhere, every time I traveled, I would make personal videos. At first, they started off with me making videos on my iPhone. Then I had to edit the videos. And it came to a point where after a couple of years, I got really great at it. 
and my friends loved watching my, my travel videos. Then after a while, I told myself, how can I justify getting this really expensive camera? It was like two grand. <laughs> and I, I, and I, that's kind of being that hacker mentality. I told myself, rather than telling myself I can't do it or it's too, too expensive, let me try to figure out a way to justify it in a business manner. So I told myself, okay, what if I spend all this money on this camera, but I freelance on the side as a way to make up the money? So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> so I okay. bought the camera. And I spent the first year just building my portfolio. So I'd go out there and film stuff for free. So I'd go to different fashion week events, the different clients, you know. So I would do stuff for free just based on word of mouth to a point where I built a credible enough portfolio that people wanted to hire me and actually pay me. Nice. So from there, just I, I brought in my, my web design skill sets once again. I built websites for, for my video production company, got the word out there that I was in business, and I began getting clients. And from there on forth, I've been getting clients just doing video production. So I've worked with people like uh, Pierre Garçon with, with the Washington Redskins. I've worked with Nancy Pelosi and congressmen and congresswomen on D.C. because I'm based in the D.C. metro area. Right. Um, I've worked with uh, YSL, the fashion companies, fashion brands, and FLPA. So it varies. And it's all from word of mouth, just people seeing my work. And that was that was self taught. So I just got a camera, went out there. I've always been one to want to immerse myself and just kind of dig into the real thing as opposed to just sitting and reading books the entire time. So yeah. that's where yeah. that came from. So what yeah. you're really saying is the next time I want a toy, just go build a business and let the business pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, because it's it's, cause it's pretty funny, right? Because after my first year of business. I actually ended up making three times back the money for the camera, just from that that whole perspective. I think I made like eight grand just in my first year from and I, and the camera was about over two grand. So right. that was pretty interesting. It kind of opened my mind to how to do things differently if you you can just do businesses to pay for it. <laughs> Indeed. I, I like this process, but what I really like about it is the evolution, uh, because you can see, and I hope everybody's picking this up, what your first idea may not be that great. That doesn't mean you shouldn't pursue it because there's something there within it to learn that you can then apply to the next. And I'm hearing that very, very loudly and very, very clearly with what you're saying, Ian. And I like that because uh, the, the the number one thing of being, you know, instead of being a solution, trying to find a problem, you learned that, hey, there needs to be a problem first. And if I can solve my own problem, then I could probably solve this problem for other people. And and I'm hearing this progression and I like it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's basically what happened. So, so for- yeah. What's next? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. This is good. Okay. So you've been doing this a while. You've been listening. You know what's going down. You know that you want to build your cash flow. But did you hear that last question? One of the best ways to figure out what your business needs to be, because I know there may be a few of you who are thinking, well, what can I do? How do I make this real estate thing happen? Well, to make it happen, what you need to do is figure out a real estate problem that you can solve. Solve it for yourself and then just solve it for one more person, two more people, three more people or four. Either way it goes, it's possible, dare I say probable, that you can make things happen faster than you think when you realize that all you have to do is solve someone else's problem. So you're being introduced to a unique way to solve problems, obviously. And what's interesting about that is that now you have another resource as well when you listen to how other entrepreneurs solve their own problems, their own cash flow issues, so that they can do the great things that they want to do. The cool thing about that is, well, now you have more tools in your tool belt. With that being said, let's just get back to it so that you can see, hear, take notes, and most importantly, implement the ideas and strategies that you're learning. Yeah, so from doing the video production company, I was a freelancer at at that time, right? So let's say a client hired me to do work. Let's say they want me to film a shoot for them next weekend. And being a freelancer, I don't have a full-time staff. So finding other employees is a hassle because let's say I'm filming a a fashion shoot. I have to find a makeup artist, a designer, a stylist, maybe actors or models, all these different people, and they're all other freelancers. 
So usually I'll find them either through, via my network, via word of mouth. I mean, uh, either posting on Facebook saying, hey, does anybody know this makeup artist who can do this kind of makeup for this client? So it came to a point where I was like, what if I could just find somebody for whatever skill set very quickly, almost in the same manner you can get a taxi with Uber, right? So I realized that lots of people have different skill sets. Lots of people want to be entrepreneurs and start their own businesses, but they don't really know how. Maybe they don't know how to make their own websites. Maybe they don't know how to market themselves, right? And other freelancing sites out there are totally different. They're catered more to, to outsourcing. And and in terms of my field with video production, it was more of a local resource. So uh, typically people find uh, freelancers on sites like Yelp or Craigslist, but those hadn't really innovated in the same manner like the online marketplaces had like Upwork, right? So I wanted to get the boast of both of both worlds, right. the boast of the, the best of the online marketplaces like Upwork or Elance, but also the best of sites like Craigslist and Yelp. Right. So that's where the idea of Peer Hustle came about. So Peer Hustle is a mobile on-demand jobs marketplace. We're purely mobile because we feel that's where the we're, we're skating. We're skating to where the puck is going, not to where it is. Right. right? So we want that. We think the whole idea of local marketplaces hasn't really been tapped into. So now, going back to solving my own problem, as a video producer, if somebody, if a client comes to me and they want me to hire a team of ten, and in a few days, I can do that via peer hustle. I just simply go in there, put in all the different skill sets I'm looking to hire, makeup artist, uh, stylist, actor, model, X, Y, Z. I can contact them all via the app. We have built-in chat, built-in video calls, built-in audio calls. So we can do everything all inside one single application. And the freelancers can also have their profiles on there and add their portfolios and things like that. So we're bringing all different kinds of freelancers together to make one marketplace in their local geography. Yes, and and that's the part that I that I like about it is there are just certain services you don't want very far away from you, and the idea of being able to go into you know download a, an, an app and be able to find uh, the individuals that you need that I think that's an ingenious way to build a business, solve a problem, create your own cash flow, and help other people in the process do the exact same thing. So. Tell us, uh, what, what are some of the popular uh, uses or characters or, or, of, of people who, uh, you know, that are actually a part of Peer Hustle that, you know, services that we could go and find? Right. So right now, our biggest uh, industries are photographers and writers. And we're big in Washington, D.C. metro area and the L.A. area, cause L.A. because it's entirely a freelancing culture, right? <laughs> the entire acting industries are just freelancers, right? And then uh, we also cater to any skill set. So, want to so as opposed to other freelancing sites that try to restrict you on what you can do, we want to give people a canvas and have them put whatever they want on their profile and turn and monetize that skill set. So you can be a bookkeeper, you can be an accountant. You can be a coach, self-help coach, speaking coach. You can be a dance teacher, right? So there aren't, aren't really any restrictions. You can go out there and monetize whatever skill set you like. I like that. I like that. And that that's in. I, I think that's really important for everybody to hear is the fact is you you probably know someone or very you probably live very close to someone who has the skill set you need, and oftentimes. Uh, it, we just don't know how to meet them. We don't know how to connect them. And what Ian has done here is made a solution that allows us to find some of those local things. Uh, I know for myself, one of the things that we often get backed up on, you know, for us inside, especially inside of our content marketing, is uh, uh, either a videographer and or video editing. Is that something that people can use and find uh, inside of Pure Hustle? Yes, yeah, that's something you can find on Pinterest. So you can just simply search for either videographer, or you can search by by particular skill or app. You can say you're looking for Adobe Premiere or After Effects, or you can say you're looking for Avid or Pro Tools or what have you. So you can you can you can drill down and on an, on a deeper level and drill down to just a particular skill or app. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. So at, at what point do you decide when you're going through this process, right? You're you're beginning to see that you solve a problem. You had to have this superhero moment where you go, you know what? I've solved this problem for myself. 
I can help other people. Tell me about that particular transition in thought uh, in thinking. So, like, I had that aha moment when I was, I figured out that that I myself had this the problem, but I wanted to first verify and test the idea. So I built a landing page, just one page, saying, "Hey, this is Pure Hustle. We're a mobile on-demand jobs marketplace. This is what we're trying to do. Sign up here for an invite if you're interested." And I put that on Craigslist. And in the first one month, I had 150 people sign up for our, for our mailing list. And I was <laughs> like, "Wow!" So this is definitely a hot idea. So the light, the light bulb went off from there that I had something. I think that's awesome. A way to test and validate. And, and just to, to prove a point, how much did that actually cost you to find that app? Oh, that was free. So I signed up for some website. I think it was Launch Rock or something like that, where they have free landing pages. I think <laughs> I probably paid for a domain name. That was probably it. Nice. So we have idea validation for less than $20. <laughs> that's it. And that's what I was trying to drive home because oftentimes when we're going out there to to build our business and, and, and start the process, we're like, well, to test, it's going to cost so much money. Well, here you are with the $20 bill. Most of you listening to me, you got one of those or you can get access to $20 and you made it happen to find out that, oh my goodness, there are other people who would like uh a service like this to help them get business. And it is definitely going to solve my problem in terms of video production. So now as you've continued to grow as an entrepreneur and helping other entrepreneurs, what would you say is the thing that you see that uh, prevents people from taking, we'll call it that, that ultimate risk or, or, or challenge or chance? I would say they hesitate and they try to wait for the perfect moment. So rather than waiting for when the timing is perfect or right, just hop right in. You know, so that's been one of my biggest uh, goals or pet peeves. I <laughs> try to just rather than think, I, I have the whole philosophy of just hop right in and figure things out. Indeed. So I always believe in getting real world feedback as opposed to just trying to mentally outthink myself. Right, so I figure just hop right in, and whatever feedback you get, you can adjust accordingly because it's actual feedback from reality as opposed to you just trying to imagine things. <laughs> yes, I, I often have told people that uh, you know, there's re a business plan is at best a guess at what you think would happen, assuming you this is your customer who you're not really sure even wants what you have to offer at the particular price or the service or will use it in the way that you think it'll be. And you won't find any of that out until you actually ask them to buy it. <laughs> you actually have to go through that particular process. So that brings up this really large question because, Ian, this stops a ton of people. How did you develop the courage to move forward with that in the back of your head? With Pure Hustle? Well, with yeah. Pure with Well, you've done this a number of times. I mean, you've had a number of different ideas. Uh, and yet you continue to find the strength to move forward where other people are still stuck on their first one. I would say it comes from just watching other people not capitalize on opportunities. And also, not, I guess you could say my parents, this being professors and being very academic, they always like to think about things. So in a way, I kind of saw opportunities they would miss out on and told myself, okay, I could do things differently if I just did the opposite of it. If I just kind of went out there and just raced like a crazy bull <laughs> in the <laughs> shop, I would figure things out. But it also just came from getting confidence and being comfortable with the uncomfortable, just being comfortable when things didn't go according to plan. So that came from just going out there and trying to plan where it came to a point where I, I just stopped planning and just kind of became somebody who liked to wing things, just go out there and figure things out. That kind of became my philosophy. Um, I worked on conquering my fears. I used to be very shy. I used to have social anxiety, but got really comfortable to a point where now I am comfortable doing presentations, speaking, and I just got comfortable believing in myself. You know that I've heard this journey before. It's very, very similar for a number 
of people. So I, I totally get it. I mean, I myself am not too different, naturally introverted and shy. And you, you just have to figure out a way or you choose to figure out a way to overcome uh, those things. What would you say then if someone is listening right now, maybe they have a skill set and they want to begin this process of offering that skill set to to other people, but they, they're still feeling a little nervous. Uh, what do you think is like, how would you counsel that person so that they would feel like, okay, I, you know, it's time to go make this thing happen. Peer hustle, at least as a way that I can begin to offer what it is that I do. How, how would you encourage them to, to actually take that, that big leap? to actually start letting people know, hey, here's a service that I can provide for you? Well, one way I did, right, is with Peer Hustler. It's just free to join. You can just go to peerhustler.com, download the app, and create a profile. And as a way to validate if, you're, if your skill is something people would, would hire you for, that's one way to test that for free. The other way I would say is hop right in. I mean, I, I try to live each day as best as I can. Because that way I set myself up for success in the future. So that just comes from reading lots of books in the self-help industry. One of my favorites is um, Psycho-Cybernetics. And that, that's probably my favorite book in terms of changing how you think and having your mindset. Where you don't, don't really believe in failure at all. I mean, it, it, it came to a point where it gave me the, the delusional confidence. <laughs> where I believe I can go out there and talk to the world. And, but for the average person out there, I would say you have to go out there and risk. I mean, because I believe in fl- fight or flight, right? So mm-hmm. if you aren't fighting something, you're taking flight. And you can't really expect to get anywhere because whatever you do, you're more likely to do that in the future. So if you take flight now, today, you're more likely to take flight again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So to break the cycle, you have to fight. So I break it down to a point where it's just binary, right? Cause so, so I'm not sure if you folks are familiar with the TV show, Mr. Robot, but there's a saying in there that either you're a one or a zero, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I mean, to me, it's kind of that simple. So either you're doing something or you're not doing something. Like there is, isn't really an in-between. And the only way to do something is to take action. So I believe in taking action. So for the person out there, I would say, just hop right in, take action. Don't really get focused on the outcome or the result. Just focus on the process. Indeed. Makes perfect sense to me. So for those uh, that are listening right now and uh, would like to take that chance, would like to figure out, okay, um, maybe this is my way. This is how I'm going to begin to build my cash flow is, is leveraging uh, the Peer Hustle platform or just they want to find out more about what you're up to. Uh, how? What's the best way uh, for us to get started, to track you down, Ian, how how can we get more of what you what you're doing? All right, so you can find us on Peer Hustle. That's www.peerhustle.com. You can also email me personally by going to uh, ian at peerhustle.com. Uh, we also have a our application on there. Download it on Peer Hustle. Uh, create a profile. Contact other freelancers. Monetize your skill set. So whether you're looking for somebody like a bookkeeper, an accountant, videographer, or photographer, or you just want to monetize your skill set, we have a podcast available where we educate freelancers and show them how to grow their business. And we're looking forward to to growing to the next level and seeing what's possible in terms of what we can do as an app in terms of changing the way people think about local freelancing and work. Indeed. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So, um, but before we end here, what I would like to do is I, I want to ask you one final question. That, I mean, because here's what I know. I know there's a person listening right now who's contemplating putting on their superhero outfit for the first time. They're thinking they want to take the risk. They, they're thinking that maybe they can. Maybe they can finally begin to set themselves free, finally begin to have a, that side hustle, have an idea uh, of something that they could actually make happen for themselves. But Ian, in the back of their head, they got that voice. And I know you know that voice. You have done battle with that voice uh, that often tells us what we can't do, why it won't work, and how long it's going to be before we see any results. Nonetheless, you've overcome that voice, but they are still hearing it. So let's pretend for a second that that person is sitting in front of you right now. What would you tell them to do? 
I would say they have to first conquer that voice before they can go anywhere. And that's just a mental game you have to play with yourself to a point where you master and become a master of your self-communication and your self-talk. And for me, once again, going back to that book, Psycho-Cybernetics, that's changed the way I talk to myself mentally to a point where I believe in myself and I can do anything. So once you conquer that voice, your, your possibilities are limitless. So that's something you have to tackle. And one way of tackling that is just to think in that binary option of either you're doing something or you're not doing something. Either you're taking flight or you're fighting something. And to to succeed with something, you have to constantly fight and making sure you're taking action. So just dive right in and focus on the process, not on the results or the outcome. Indeed and agreed. I I would like to say that I I thank you for taking the time uh, to invest your knowledge, your expertise, your experience across all these industries uh, and, and sharing that information with us here today at the Cashflow Diary. All right. Thank you for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? It probably means for you, get over to peerhustle.com. No more excuses. No more. I can't find a, well, now you have a way to find that particular person who you think you need to get your project off the ground. Or if you're one of those people who has one of these skill sets that you're like, man, I bet you other people would be able to help me and and, and pay for it. Well, you're going to go to peerhustle.com too. Why? Because then you're going to download the app, install it, put up your profile and make things happen. Guys, gals, it's time to move forward because you want a different result than you had yesterday. And now you have a way. It's been fun talking to you guys today. I do look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.